Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Welcome back. It is the Earth Master here on this Tuesday night, December 12th, 2023. It's about 9.38 p.m. here in California. And it uh, looks like 1.5 earthquake, one of the latest quakes up there in Alaska. I uh, did see a little bit of movement out here today. We'll get into that uh, in just a little bit. But first, I want to kind of look back throughout the year and uh, kind of compare this year's earthquake activity to last year's. Uh, I know we're coming up at the end of the year here in a couple weeks, so we still have some time to fill up this chart. 142 earthquakes of magnitude 6.0 and above. Now that's just 6.0 and above from the USGS here. And uh, looks like 142. That's pretty decent. The largest going to be that 7.8 back around the uh, Turkey area in the beginning of the year. Remember that? I uh, had a sequence of large earthquakes out here in this area. In fact, uh, they've seen roughly about uh, six large earthquakes. Pretty decent aftershock sequence there, and it was spread out all over the place. I was waiting for this to uh, uh, pick up further across this plate boundary right here, but uh, basically stayed over here. That was quite a bit of earthquake activity stirring up then. Um, so yeah, 7.8. How does this year compare to last year? Well, pulled up last year's activity here for the entire year, 2022. And uh, 127. So if you look at that, we're looking at, uh, you know, definitely a lot more earthquake activity above the 6.0 threshold for this year. And we're not quite done yet. Uh, last year, we've seen a couple 7.6s there in the Mexico area and also Papua New Guinea uh, around the Turkey area. There was some little scattered activity here with a couple 6s uh, stirring up. But of course, you know, in February of this year, we've seen things really ramp up there. So... Uh, technically, yeah, technically we're uh, definitely way ahead compared to last year. Uh, a couple different areas out here that uh, have not seen any sufficient movement here in a little bit. Um, look at the Crow Kamachaka trench there. Last This is from uh, last year. Nothing above 6.0. That is crazy. A little bit of movement there in Japan, but this is a major subduction zone uh, this year. Still a little blank, uh, and for the most part, the movement that we did see uh, was relatively deep. A lot of these earthquakes, even this one that kicked up here, uh, uh, when was the last six-pointer? I want to see when that was. Um, uh, that was uh, back in October there. Well, where's this one at? Where's it? Oh, that's way over here across the uh, Aleutian Trench. So one of these right here, 6.1 back in uh, uh, September. Pretty deep. And then another one here, uh, 6.5 back in April. Both of these are relatively deep. There's still that, this leaves a wide open area here of uh, potential for a mega quake, I believe. It's just, it has not filled in. And um, it's building up, no doubt. I think the further uh, deeper activity we see, the more likely that we'll see a larger event here soon. Uh, New Zealand really hasn't seen anything above the 6.0 threshold here uh, so far this year. Um, Still watching that. We've got to watch these little quiet zones, right? California being one of them as well. Uh, last year, uh, California didn't really have too much activity above 6.0. We did have one 6.4 here back in 2022, uh, December, coming up on a year about uh, here in about eight days or so. That was off the coast of Ferndale, uh, Northern California, there at the southern end of the Cascadia. But uh, so far, you know, we've seen earthquake activity, but it just hasn't been uh, uh, hitting the West Coast in terms of larger scale movement. Middle America Trench down here, uh, a little bit of activity stirring up throughout the year. Uh, South America as well. But um, yeah, just, I kind of look, look at these little uh, gap zones here in terms of lack of activity. And, uh, you know, it's very possible we could see uh, those gaps kind of fill in. Look at New Zealand. Both years, nothing above the 6.0. And they're definitely overdue here uh, for some larger scale movement. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the current activity here from the USGS. Uh, so far in the last 24 hours, the largest magnitude is going to be this 5.6. Over here, upstream into the Tonga area, uh, about 4 o'clock this morning. So not a whole lot of large scale activity taking place here today mostly in our typical zones that we see activity uh, here in Southern, there in Southern California, 
Uh, a little small microquake activity throughout the last 24 hours, but generally speaking, this is uh, some quiet conditions out there uh, across Southern California for now. It was amping up pretty nicely uh, across uh, around the Brawley seismic zone. Had a little swarm going on here in the Salted Sea, but it looks like things have kind of tapered off for now. Uh, some slight smaller activity up here around Long Valley Super Volcano, but uh, that's generally small microquake activity as well. Uh, a handful of earthquakes there across Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier. Uh, got about four earthquakes there around uh, the Mount St. Helens area, but it, as you can see, very small earthquakes. Nothing new to report there across that area uh, for now. Let me see what we got for the trimmer map here tonight. See if there's anything new. Doesn't look like it. Only 10 epicenters of tremor here, a little bit at the extreme southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, further out and about, uh, Yellowstone National Park. Very spotty out there. I do want to double check that, make sure we have the latest information here. And uh, looking at the seismograph stations here, looks like a lot of activity has died off. Uh, most recent is going to be this little movement here. Uh, er, way earlier this morning, late last night, I should say, uh, there's a little bit of spiky activity, but for the most part, Yellowstone is just quiet as can be for now. We'll know, right? We'll obviously know if things decide to kick back up there. I, I do cover Yellowstone quite a bit when we see earthquake activity, but for now, it's uh, it's just quiet. Um, movement out here across the Pecos, Texas area continues in the oil fields out here across the Atlantic. Well, still got a 4.7 coming in here. It looks like earlier this uh, evening near the Reckonis Ridge south of Iceland. Uh, let's go ahead and dig into the Iceland activity, which they really haven't put out uh, any new update here. And they've been updating this thing like crazy, but uh, last update was six days ago. Tomorrow will be seven days uh, without any update. Uh, the latest uh, earthquake map here. Uh, for the Iceland area, still shows uh, diminishing activity. Not a whole lot. 23 earthquakes, or 22 uh, in the last 12 hours. And as you can see here around the Grindavik area, where we've seen that recent magma intrusion, things have all but dropped off completely. Uh, there's hardly anything to report here across the Iceland area, uh, and specifically in this zone. Uh, a little bit of swarming going on further up along the rift zone here. Of course, there's volcanoes all throughout this area. But I think, uh, you know, I think, I hope um, that uh, things will continue to calm down there and life can return somewhat to normal. Um, and that eruption is long gone, or at least the potential for it is long gone. Uh, but not completely out of the woods yet, right? Got to watch this more closely and uh, do a little bit more studying on it. I'm sure the geologists and whatnot are paying close attention, but it's at a stage right now where it's awfully quiet up there. Uh, a little clustering going on in the Aleutian Trench area. Looks like some force stirring up here uh, throughout the last 24 hours. Nothing big, but we are seeing some deeper activity here to the subduction zone. 4.1 earlier this morning, 176 kilometers deep. There's that super deep earthquake here into the Sea of Osk. That is the uh, Kuril Kamachaka Trench. We just chatted about that, how this has just been wide open and lacking any earthquake or large earthquake activity for quite some time. I uh, definitely think this thing is who knows when. But the further deeper activity we see, obviously, the more strain that's being built upstream here for the next mega quake uh, across this area. Uh, that 4.4 was 430 kilometers deep. Still seeing some uh, aftershock activity out here in the Philippines, although things are uh, tapering down, it looks like. A couple fours, even a five-pointer out there. Uh, look at the Earthquake 3D globe here. Shows some threes down in New Zealand. And uh, looks like a 5.3 here into the Vanuatu area, or just south here. This is a region that did see that, uh, oh, what was it out here? Seven-pointer, right? The 7.1 a few days ago in this area. So aftershock continues. Aftershock activity continues there for a little bit uh, around the Vanuatu area. Uh, one little lonesome earthquake out here in the southwest Indian Ridge, a 5.2. That was from last night. So that earthquake just about ready to drop off the globe. It looks like it has already. And that means I'm off just slightly here. There we go. Sometimes this uh, makes 
adjustments by itself, but I'd like to keep the last 24 hours of earthquake activity up here. Um, 5.5 way out here in the divergent boundary zone off the coast, way off the coast of South America. Uh, with that type of activity, could be looking at maybe some increasing movement here across the, um, the subduction zone in this area. Uh, but also at the same time with that uh, plate boundary kind of separating, should see things in, uh, intensify out here as well, potentially across the western Pacific. I'm uh, going to jump into uh, some space weather activity and then we'll look at a huge pattern change that's coming up here for the west coast uh, as we head into a little bit later into December. As uh, far as space weather activity goes, well, we're looking at uh, some minimal conditions. Not seeing a whole lot of uh, flaring going on, although this one sunspot, and I've talked about this one here a little bit, the newer region that's south of 35, or um, just south of 3513, which is that sunspot up here. Uh, this is flaring slightly. That's going to be uh, number 3514 here. Noticing a little bit of growth in that uh, magnetic structure here. A lot of colors popping up and trying to form something complex here within the sunspot core. This region has just definitely been a letdown. It continues to decay and uh, will probably just continue on that way. Uh, around the eastern limb of the sun over here, a couple newer sunspots, but uh, kind of hard to tell if we got anything exciting uh, coming around the bend, but we'll continue to watch that in the days ahead. Right now, 75% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, X flare around 5% chance. And uh, as far as the auroras go, getting a little bit of elevated conditions right now. Uh, not really expecting too much. Looks like maybe some of the, uh, well, what do we got there on the four or on the uh, 15th? Maybe uh, a little bit of heightened activity. Uh, I'm sure maybe some of that activity is from the coronal hole that has been facing us, which now, um, let's see here, looks like that's further away from the Earth directed view and closing up a little bit, uh, stabilizing in this area. Uh, so. But nothing major headed towards the uh, planet for now. All right, uh, weather outlook is uh, very interesting here. I see a lot of folks chatting about this huge pattern change that's uh, coming up here for the West Coast. Uh, of course, most of the rainfall this winter has been confined up to the Pacific Northwest. That all changes here um, as we head into about... Oh, the 16th and 17th here. This is this weekend coming up. Uh, I'm kind of getting excited for some rainfall out here. And it looks like that rainfall is going to cover a good portion of California. That includes Southern California as well. Uh, some decent rainfall accumulation rates out here, uh, precipitation rate. Uh, and that is backed up and reinforced by a couple different storms if we put this into motion. Although it looks like it's kind of backed off a little bit. Um, let me run a uh, precipitation accumulation here and see what we have. It's still quite impressive, though, as we put this into motion. It looks like maybe towards the end of December for a total tally of, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe between three and five inches out here across northern California. That's decent. And, of course, this is all subject to change. It's been fluctuating slightly uh, out here in the West Coast and uh this pattern, though, is starting to take shape out here in the North Pacific, uh, in the uh, Pacific out here. Let me show you guys the upper air dynamics, a jet stream that kind of moves everything along. Um, this is what I've been chatting about right here. This little uh, supercharged jet stream that's kind of stretching across the Pacific headed towards California. A lot of times we get some very strong storm systems on that type of setup. And it looks like, uh, you know, it's going to form... Uh, it's got a couple breaks in here, but it does look like it's going to stay at somewhat of a consistent pattern out here. And that means uh, storm systems uh, running up against the West Coast area. So I'm very hopeful that we'll see some uh, sufficient rainfall uh, for the California area. I'm looking forward to it, right? We definitely need it. And of course, what goes on here across the West Coast does play a major part in uh, other areas of the country. Uh, let me bring up the... Uh, the states here and we'll check out the precipitation out here across the rest of the country while well, the west coast there gets a little bit of rainfall we see some rainfall filling back in but not much so it does, doesn't look like it's getting a whole lot of uh, uh, precipitation out here across the center portion of the country 
out here in the east yes and down in the gulf states it looks like some more moisture coming in um, so we'll just have to see how this pattern wants to play out uh, it has been like i said been fluctuating slightly there with the uh, uh the potential timing and the estimates there of rainfall total over the past couple model runs but they all still seem to show you know some decent um precipitation rates out there this one doesn't go that far into the future um let's see what this one has there the cmc model still showing some decent moisture out here across california this only goes to about the 23rd so either way i think we're going to be uh, switching over to a decent weather pattern uh, for the california area pretty excited about it i'm i'm definitely looking for some decent rain um, all seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet for now. Um, again, just kind of just watching things out here. Hard to say exactly where we're going to see some further movement. Uh, past 30 days of activity. You know, I guess we could... I used to look at New Zealand, though. They continue to remain awfully quiet with a couple threes here and there, but I don't know. I think we may start to see some movement down here. We have to eventually. Uh, Kuro Kamachaka, a little bit of light activity up here. California, nothing really uh, above the 4.5 threshold. So we'll see what Mother Nature wants to do. See how the plates uh, adjust out here as we head towards the winter solstice in a little bit. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good night. Uh, I am just, I don't know, I've been feeling kind of, woo, kind of down today. Like, uh, can't put my finger on it. It's definitely a weird feeling. I don't know if anybody else has been feeling off today, but uh, I guess off is the best word I can think of. Uh, but we will sleep on it and get a better uh, night's sleep tonight, hopefully, and uh, see what Wednesday wants to bring up, which is tomorrow. Uh, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow then. Have a safe night and uh, just be prepared. We'll catch you guys later.